on this week's episode of Bungalow on the Bus, we talk about how you cannot get a wall burger downtown anymore because they're closed. They're painting Black Lives Matter on a big downtown street and, uh, you know, coronavirus updates. Oh, Actually, coronavirus. Coronavirus. Welcome to Bungalow and the Bus. I am the Bus, John Busdecker. And I'm wound tighter than a cinnamon roll, Brendan O'Connor from Bungalower.com. You know, Brendan, I don't think I've ever had a whole cinnamon roll from Cinnabon. <laughs> oh, no, those are gross. Oh, okay. I'll go on record. I don't like them. They, no? They're too, like, foamy almost. Oh, well, I've and never it, had a whole one, so I don't even know. No, no. I'd like to go, they used to have, like, these really good sourdough ones in the UP up in Michigan. And I would always just Bear eat claws. the middle. I just want to eat the middle of the so- of the cinnamon roll. That's the best part of the cinnamon yeah, yeah. roll. The rest is like boring. Uh huh. I used to get them all the time, but I was a heavy child. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've been baking a lot, and I just need to stop, so I know what you're talking about. Here on Bungalow or the Bus, we talk about all the top headlines in Orlando's downtown bungalow neighborhoods, including Ivanhoe Village. Where, where we, we are tonight. Is this Ivanhoe Village? Yeah. This counts as Ivanhoe? It does. Okay. We're in Lock Haven Park, across the street from Lock Haven Park, at the Manila Museum. It's also Lake Formosa, the Lake Formosa neighborhood. Yeah. We're on the porch at the Manila Museum, and uh, we didn't tell them. We're just here. Well, we just rolled up. That's we right. were going to put in some hammocks over by the uh, the mayor. A tree, not not Mayor Dyer. Yeah, he's not strong enough to hold us both <laughs> up. <laughs> that's not a read. I'm just saying life. But yeah, we're here on the porch hanging out. Hot, hot out. And there's like crickets or like frogs or something. This yeah. feels very Southern. There's, it does feel very, very Southern here. I'm on a rocking chair. I need some sweet tea. Sweet tea. <laughs> sweet tea. Remember up north, there wasn't any sweet tea. No, it was iced tea with sugar. <laughs> yeah, brisk. Brisk tea in cans. That's right. If you wanted tea, iced tea, you'd have to say iced tea. Otherwise, if you asked for tea, you'd get like a hot tea. Like a Now chamomile. they probably got it everywhere. I don't think so. I think so. it's taken over. No. I think so. They got it at McDonald's. I'm sure they got it everywhere now. Well, <laughs> we'll see. If you like what you hear tonight, go to bungalower.com. You can uh, read all about the things that we talk about. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. And we also got the, the key program, the... the yeah, Bungalow has a new buy local ish program where if you support us in the amount of over twenty dollars, you'll get a keychain mailed to you within a month. We're doing every month. We'll ship them out, and that unlocks deals that participating businesses around Orlando. Uh, you could get like cool happy hour prices, fifty percent off your purchase. It just depends on what they're comfortable doing. Yeah, and and one lucky person will get a key to brendan's house and you get to sleep there with them <laughs> but you're always going to be the big spoon because i like to be held okay yeah. well, uh, you know you got you got to take the good with the bad yeah yeah like a. but i like it if you're really small like a chihuahua with a great dane that's what <laughs> <Okay>. i want <laughs> i'm the great dane uh what's your week been like john uh it's been pretty good i was actually i was in north carolina over the oh. weekend am i allowed to say that we're we're yeah. both we're both states that are experiencing high COVID, so yeah, but it's not like I'm going to New York where they don't want me. You're not talking to anyone. You you went up there to go see your wife. Yeah, that's right. She's up in a pottery a... studio working. Yeah, and she's up in the mountains where nobody lives. So. Does that mean she's lesbian? No. Oh, okay. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was a euphemism. <laughs> she's, she's actually, actually at a pottery studio. Get... This. All right, good. <laughs> she don't care. So I was up there, and and now I'm back, and. Doing my thing at the sheriff's office. Staying at home. Too many COVID cases. Well, did you see, John, that we were nominated for some Best of Orlando stuff? I did. I saw that Bungalow on the Bus was nominated for uh, like Best Radio Show. Which is crazy. We're not going to win that. I'll we've tell you never, that right We've now. never won it. We've no, never. we'll not even get close. I like that we were in the rankings, though. I don't think we've ever We're high it. up because Bungalow is a B, and they were in alphabetical oh. order, I think. Oh. Yeah, but anyway, we might. People might just get to ours and be like, you know, I don't want to. I don't it won't even be know this episode, shows. though. <laughs> yeah, but you were nominated. I was for uh, Best Local Big Shot Who's Not 
a politician, politician which yeah. is great. Uh, Jim Colbert, also nominated, uh-huh. will clearly win. He gets more airtime than I do. We'll see. You never know. There's a lot of other folks on that list. I think I got second place last year. That's right? good. Yeah, I can't remember. I need I'm to look sure that Orlando up. Weekly got first. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and we got nominated. Bungalore got nominated uh, for Best Publication. That's great. Which is great. I put a lot into our our monthly print product so it's great that we ranked for that too all right awesome yeah here's uh, the hoping you win i'm uh i'm working on something yeah i want to know if you know anything about this uh have you heard of jonestown before um keep going okay it's it was orlando's first african-american community then no I, I don't know about this really it was actually where reeves terrace is now i don't know where that is uh right on s- like south close to the greenwood cemetery ah okay and actually it would flood all the time because it was like not great land yeah and the fern creek would land uh overflow and and flood it um before all of these water management things were put into place and so they were actually moved uh forcibly relocated over to paramore which is crazy to me when was this in like the 40s i think oh all right yeah, and it was the and it was actually kind of a thriving community, and I just find it really interesting. And so I've been looking at it and trying to geographically get an idea of what that all looks like. And uh, this guy just let his dog poop and didn't pick up the really pick it up. Oh, pick so up I, your poo! No, I'm bro. two things. Yeah, yeah, pick up your poo. <laughs> yes. Hashtag stop pollution. Right from our friends that keep Orlando beautiful. So I've just been doing a little report on it. You'll hear more about it soon. I've just had never heard of it. Before. I never heard of that either. Right, which is crazy. Yeah, and it's it's really interesting because it comes. It actually feeds into. Uh, this Division Street conversation that we've been having for a while, and we ha- we talked about it last week. People want Division renamed, and then I heard a number of people have started saying that it's not true, that Division was actually this dividing line between uh, white and black in downtown Orlando. And I, I will – this I actually heard about. This whole Jonestown community was all, to the east of Division – and they were relocated to the west of it. Ah. So, like, clearly that was a dividing line. True. And it's a and great even example. If, even if that wasn't, like, the original reason they called it division, it, it sounds like over time that's what it yeah, is. They just backed it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, really interesting stuff. Uh, the or, My friends over at the Orange County Regional History Center have sent me some old Orlando Sentinel articles, which were, like, pretty drastic. Like the their their language, the language, the language oh, yeah. is just offensive. And to be to be fair, uh, not even to be to fair, be fair, a lot of a lot of papers back in the oh, 20s, yeah. 30s, 40s, not just Orlando, not just like Southern papers too. I mean, you read papers all over the country; they, right. they use some pretty offensive language. Gross. It's yeah. gross to see. But I'll imb- I'll make sure I embed them so everybody can see uh-huh. <laughs> just how bad it was. And uh, and then I also did you see this? Uh, I'll talk about one thing because it's going to lead into another. The uh, the Sea Art Orlando sculpture downtown at Lake Eola. Which one? The it's the woman in a hill, and yes. her hand is oh, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, when these when these came to Orlando, I did a story on it for the Orlando Sentinel. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. some people didn't like some of them. No, especially that Eye of Ra one or whatever. Like, the he looks like Sauron. Yeah, Sauron. For Lord of the Rings. The one by Publix. I repeatedly tell people I will one day do a one man version of Lord of the Rings. That'd be good. In front of you. I would. I would sit and watch that. Okay. Yeah, yeah I would right. totally watch. That. We'll do it for friends. Like yeah. a bring your own venue. Uh huh. Uh, oh yeah. So this is the one. There's like grass growing on it. Yeah. People it used go to on have it. They a take real pictures. grass, and then it just got like pounded down. Yeah. Well, to people dirt. love it, and that's sort of the point of Publix. Yeah, so Sometimes. interact with it and it's supposed to be i guess the artist statement is like it's whispering your truth to you like you can sit in its hand and and it will whisper oh i didn't know that i didn't know that either uh the reason i know that now is because somebody uh poured red paint on it ah and it made it look like the sculpture was crying red tears okay and the hand that you would normally sit in was also covered in red paint and so someone were they wearing fur no, it wasn't a beta thing. <laughs> and I didn't I didn't take it as a specific statement. I just took it as a powerful statement. Yeah. Right. I didn't know if it, nobody there was no context to say who was saying what. And so I shared it on Instagram. Hey, this happened. And then 
the city told me, oh, we've already cleaned it up. And then, and I took a picture. It had already been cleaned up. All right. So I shared that post, them, both of them together. Here, this happened this morning. The city has already cleaned it up. But, like, interesting. What do you think about this statement? And Instagram blew up. Yeah. And people, you know, there were people who accused us of being anti-Black Lives Matter because we, like, commended the city staff for cleaning it up so quickly. There were people who um, saw it as, like, anti-gay because it, they saw it as like an LGBTQ statement for Pride Month. And so actually, and, and meanwhile, people who know me are like, did you do that? Because that's totally like a oh, new they thing. Thought you, right? paint, you threw paint on right, it. Right, which is actually kind of like, that's something so, you would do. Very me. I would probably do something like that. And I'm surprised I didn't. <laughs> didn't think of it, right? Or at least put like red ribbons on it so I didn't harm the statue. Uh so like the inside, I was like, oh, it's just that's what good art does is it gets people talking and it completely changed the context of the statue. But people were incensed. And there were also people who were just who don't like to see public uh, pieces touched in any way, who are very offended that someone would impose that on them yeah. in a public space. Yeah. And uh, it's just really interesting. So if you want to see some of the conversations that happen, so go to our Instagram. Is there any idea why that was done? Is there any context Nobody to it? came forward that I know of. Uh, so it could be anything. It, it could. could just, I mean, it could be a lot of things. I would say 95% of the comments took it as a Black Lives Matter statement. Especially so, with so I mean I, I'm not trying to be sure uh, I'm not trying to be uh, a, a jerk here, but what what would be the statement on that one? Like, like because I, I understand hand, some of the other ones that are going around uh, anti violence. You know, like there was the red paint was on the hand of the statue, meaning like red handed. We have blood on our hands. Okay, you know, like that kind of a thing. And actually, John, a lot of the statements wanted it to remain. They wanted the paint to stay. Really? Because they, they found it just a more interesting piece of public see, work. See, my problem with that, and, and once again, I'm open to arguments on this, but my problem with that is is I don't know if I would think about the artist who put it there and, right. and what is their intent on it. And once again, I, I get it. Things change and because you think about the statue, or the, the, the bull in New York and but but they didn't change the Merrill the Lynch bull, and and they put the another they piece in front of put it. a young girl right in front of it and like but they didn't change the bull they just changed the meaning with having the bull and the little girl right in front of the bull and so like I I don't know like to me splashing red paint on sure. somebody else's work to me that doesn't it's a it is so it could be. You unless know, there's something it, I just don't know, unless there's like a, a, a message you're trying to convey, especially if that piece represented something. And I don't I don't really know if it does. It's a nice message. I don't think it's something anything about violence or, or uh -huh. racism like it, it complete. Again, it completely changed the context with the adding of the paint. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know. I just find it. I, I find it really interesting. And I. As a public i'm a street artist that's more yeah. of my practice and so when i see something like that and actually and this is hard for me once you put a piece of your work out into public it's not yours anymore and you're actually asking other people to engage with it on their own uh -huh. and, and so like the placing of a public sculpture i actually think you you're kind of asking for people to do something but to like it. you you just had one installed right i did the i mean what if lizards. somebody just spray painted well you know, bungalow or sucks on it which they certainly could and i hope no, they i don't. mean they could but we would, would we that be put, okay we put anti-graffiti <laughs> okay well, what if somebody took a, a a saw and sawed off half of it and said then it's over you, you know think so? yeah yeah be, but would you be okay with that no i'd be sad but I know it's also a risk that comes when you put something out in the public. Uh -huh. Like well, everyone always says, this is why we can't have nice things. Yeah, <laughs> because everybody has an opinion. And I actually feel like even with graffiti, when people do something like that, I think they're doing it because they feel like they're not being heard yeah. or they're not being listened to. They don't have a voice. And there was, uh, there's been multiple points in my life where because I have somewhat of a podium like i'm not saying i'm you know 
uh, I don't know, some huge. I'm not famous, but yeah. I but I have a pl- a mini platform, a hyper local program uh, platform where I can voice myself, and so people can hear that, and then people respond. And I remember once when I worked for Orlando Weekly, I made fun. Of, I did a piece making fun of tags, and I got a death threat. <laughs> And and I've told this story a couple times, and I found out who it was that gave me the death threat. Yeah, and I reached out to them, and I helped them set up a public graffiti program in Orlando. I'm that's not going to say who it was, but right, but that's because I knew, in the core of it, while it's not okay to ever give anybody a death threat, I knew it was this kid having a reaction of feeling like nobody was listening to him. So I called him up, and I was like, "How? What's up? Like, what do you need? What? How?" Why would you say this? How can I help you? And yeah. he said, I just feel like nobody cares about street art graffiti. And I was like, I care. Let's get you a wall. And we got him a wall and it's still going today. And it's that's super great. cool. Um, so that's just something I try to carry with me with things like this. You All can't right. take it too personally. Okay. That being said, if you come for me, I'll yeah. come, I'll come back. Cut you. Yeah, I'll cut They'll you. Cuddle. I'll cut your face. <laughs> Kick your mom in the face. <laughs> uh, just interesting. And then so that ties into John. That same stretch of road, Rosalind, uh, that stretches between Washington and Robinson, right downtown, right on the western edge of Lake Eola Park, will soon be uh, a canvas for a new street mural. Yeah, that says Black Lives Matter. This is a big. This was big news today because it, it, uh, this Thursday night right now, and so this sort of came out today. I feel like all the news stations out of were nowhere. I thought really out of nowhere. Yeah, because I started seeing it on on Facebook and Instagram, and now there there was like helicopters above <laughs> getting getting folks uh, getting the. They're not painting it yet. They were painting like the the points were going to outline. Yeah, I've reached out to the city to see how long Roslyn will be closed. Closed. I'm assuming it's going to be just the weekend, Saturday. right? They said it will be done Saturday. I thought they said that. Uh, I thought I read that the like like students from Jones High School were going to help out. They are, and that should be happening f- this morning, 11 a.m. Friday is when it starts. They're having a big event, uh, and then there's some like local religious leaders and. Uh, Commissioner Hill has has inserted herself somehow, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, so it'll just that's and it's going to be giant. It's going to be like four hundred. It's like feet you've long. seen in some other cities. I think Washington D.C. was the one that did it first, leading up to the White House. I what believe. What do you think about it? So here's what I think, and and once again, I think you and I should probably say we are both white men, and so we might have a a different. Yeah. Uh, take I don't know I just want to make that clear but I will say I think it's a good gesture I think it's a good step it's a good thing to do it's it, it definitely gets publicity right it shows that you're at least aware of some issues the problem is and once again I'm not trying to belittle what the city's doing because I, I do think it's a it's an it's an important step but it's pretty easy to do. And what I mean by that, I mean, yes, it takes workers. Yes, it takes uh, kids to help out. And it's going to take a day. And they're going to paint. And they'll take photos. That's, it's pretty simple to paint a street. It's a lot harder <laughs> right. to do the work that uh, makes it so Black Lives Matter for real. And so, I mean, that's going to take a long, hopefully not a long time. But, but my guess is it'll take longer than painting a street. To get that to actually happen, it'd be great if they use it to announce some actual moves, right? Yeah. Like our and our uh, police review board will now have the ability to actually do something instead of just write letters mm-hmm. and review hirings and firings. Like, if you have a police review board, they should be empowered to do, to actually review and do something, right? Not just depending on how they set sit. up the board, but yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. give it some teeth. Otherwise, mm-hmm. what's the point? I sat on a city board for Lou Gardens. And we weren't allowed to do anything. We were just basically there to approve spending. And even though I didn't want to approve the spending because it was over budget, <laughs> I was basically kind of told to just shut up and do my thing. Yeah. Which is why I didn't do that second term because <laughs> it was a waste of my time. And and not to say there's a lot of boards where you actually have input, but there are also a lot of boards where you just don't, you're not empowered to do anything. Yeah. And you're just jumping through hoops. And that jumping through hoops move I love that they're doing this again. I love public art. So, and and when they the mayor in D.C. did this in front of the White House, uh-huh. what a 
powerful statement. Yeah. Like you cannot, I don't care if you are an all lives matter person, blue lives matter. I don't care what you think. I do care. But in this context, uh, you cannot tell me that that wasn't a powerful statement, yeah, whether no, you agree. agree with it or not. I agree with Especially, it. Especially, you know, you see it from above and it leads right to the white house. Yeah. And like, that's, and that's why it's carried this impact across the nation. And you're seeing other cities who want to do it too. The problem is I feel like in parodying the message, instead of coming up with their own supportive statement, uh, I feel like it could maybe diminish the importance of it too, of that very first one. Like it's, like a xerox copy of a uh, really you, good you think statement? they should have come up with another idea yeah and the context of it is important too just like we were talking about the context of the red paint and how it changed the context of the sculpture that it was put on the context of where you're placing it is also really important and so like i know they just chose a very public space where yeah. you're going to see it from lake yola yeah and, right? that, and i i think that road was suggested by some folks too I don't, I don't think it was just out of a hat. I, I don't know. It might have been because it's very well trafficked. You might be able to see it from above for more buildings up there. I do wonder that like Orange Avenue is a county road, right? Or a state road, isn't it? Yeah. So that's also very So they very might not difficult. be able to do it on where you, that. You know where you could do it? Hmm. On Division, which yeah. is the, a major point of contention right now for racial issues in Orlando. Uh-huh. Right? And, and, and if you're really trying to convince me that an, you as an institution care and are listening yeah then the context of where you're going to place that statement matters uh-huh um, but then you could also argue the opposite saying well if you put it on division which uh is on kind of the other side of i4 is it is it getting the message across to the people that need to see it very true Mm-hmm. Very and true. I get what you're saying too. So yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong, but you are. But, I'm just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> but that's why we're not on the decision maker it's panel. It's true. Like I said, I'm not trying to say it's a. I, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I, I, I'm, I'm not. No. I just. I. I do Everyone's going to be down there taking the picture for the yep. gram. They're all going to be sharing it. It's going to be a great launch pad it's for just, future protests. It's a protests. tiny piece in a bigger puzzle. Yes. A very. It tiny can't piece stop. A very big puzzle. You can't think that it's going to end there because no. it's not. There's still and, and, so and much work to I do. I do want to say this on behalf of the city and, and the county and the state. And, 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 I, and I know this might be hard to hear, but I will say like, like some of that change takes a little time. Like I, I get that people might want something to happen today. Right. But like, I mean, I, I work at an organization that has 2,500 employees and if I need to do something, like it can take a week just to get to the right person. And once right. again, I, I'm not trying to say that, you know, you just need to wait your turn. Like I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I just don't know if you can change uh, uh, centuries of of oppression, honestly, no, but in a day. No, and and, and you can't. But you can paint. On a street, but in there a can day. be yeah. There must be like a laundry list of items that can oh yeah. And, should and, and like I said, I'm not saying okay, we'll take care of this in a year or two. Like I, I I'm not saying that, but I, I, I do. I don't think you can make huge citywide, countywide, statewide changes in a, in a week and a half. No. And so that being said, and all this bleh, 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 posturing we just uh-huh. did. I think it's really cool. No, I do too. And, and I mean, they don't have to. I mean, they don't have to do any of it. I mean, they could just say, "Well, that's for DC, not for yeah. us." And it actually wasn't a city-led initiative. People came to them, like some local religious yeah. leaders came to them. I think even with the funding for it, said, uh-huh. we want to do this. And the city was like, Heck "They yeah, got so paint. They got paint laying around somewhere. It can't yeah. be just normal paint, though, All right? Because right? then it doesn't last. And I don't know. It has. It takes very specific. It's almost like a sandpapery thing. Ah, yeah. And it really has to affix. How are we doing on time? We gotta. We gotta take a little break. Okay, but we'll be right back, Brendan. All right, we won't talk about racism anymore. This is Erica for Orange County Library System to tell you about these three things. Get your family moving and energized with Family Zumba on June 27th. You'll want to wear comfortable clothes and workout shoes for this virtual event. Are you someone who speaks little to no Spanish but you'd like to learn? Join us for Basic Spanish on July 1st. This vocabulary workshop for beginners is a virtual event. Estates, Wills, and Probate is a virtual event on July 2nd from the Genealogy Center at our West Oaks branch. Learn what these records are, where to find them, 
and how to use them for family history research. For information on these three things and much more, visit OCLS.info or call 407-835-7323. Orange County Library System is your place to learn, grow, connect. Welcome back to Bungalow and the Bus. I am the bus, John Busdecker. I'm your outspoken drunk gay uncle, Brendan O'Connor from Bungalore.com. You are an outspoken gay uncle. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for my nephew to get older so he can be embarrassed by me at family functions. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm into that. And do chores. And do chores. Yeah, like, I need oh. the lawn mode. Get your son over here. Get your son over here. It's time. Uh-huh. Get him over to Gunkles. We'll take him over to Parliament House. I'll afterwards. get him a nice cold glass of sweet tea. <laughs> <laughs> here on Bungle or the Bus, we talk about local headlines. That's it. That's it. And we're here at the Manel Museum. We're hanging out on their porch. They don't yeah. know it. Getting weird looks from people who are like, right. what are those guys doing with microphones? What are they, doing? Are they doing one of those podcasts? Podcasts. I hear about those podcasts. Pea podcasts. <laughs> like two peas and a podcast. Is that Joe Rogan over there? <laughs> <laughs> Me? Do I look like Joe Rogan? No. Oh, he's hot. <laughs> he came to town, right? He's supposed to in August, but I don't know yeah, about that one. Know that's going. Yeah, because we'll it's coronavirus. I don't know stuff. if anything's at the going on at the Amway Center. No. Everything's canceled. They're dipping into their emergency funds too. That the city set is. up for them. Yeah, everybody's kind of dipping into that. We're doing okay at Bungalow. Or thank God. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, Dragon. You following this coronavirus stuff? I, so I mean, I think I was like everybody, where you know, concerning, but you know, life's going on, and all of a sudden there's ten thousand, five thousand cases. We just got five thousand. This is Thursday. We just got five thousand five hundred new cases. Yeah. Uh, in Florida, 500. Uh, what else happened? Leesburg. There was a lot in Polk County, which we don't live in Polk County, but there was and, a lot out there. And here locally in Orange County, they're seeing hot spots mostly with young people. Yeah, those youngsters going out. Going out to the bars. Stop going to the bars. Well, that's, they just shut down. They kind of made they an example. I know they shut down the Knights Pub. Made an example of them. Took their liquor license. Which, like, is a little... Suspended, I think. Extreme, I think. Well, I mean, th- I mean, I think they said, look, you're not taking this serious. We're going to we're gonna make, like you said, make but an I've example. But I've seen people who've been at capacity, like over capacity, all through this, and nothing's happened to But them. have they had outbreaks at their places? I think so. Well, ha- are they... Heard as, of. Are they, are they covered internationally? Because I've seen that story on... On websites yeah, all across the world. But what was it about that to pick that up? I think part of it was probably young young people getting sick. The city's and, really cracking down. Yeah, and the city and the county and the state. I are think they really could also picking trace up the it. story. I think that was the thing too, Brenda. Yeah, but they can trace other stuff too. And so, what is it? There's there's just something that doesn't sit right with me. So the Orlando Weekly just read a, just ran a story about where the owner is saying he's being scapegoated. Uh huh. I'm not saying like. What he was doing was acceptable, but I am saying there are hundreds of other bars like him that are doing the exact same thing. Yeah, and I just find it really interesting. I just don't that know the numbers down were, on that I, one bar. I could be wrong. I just haven't heard numbers hit. It was like thirty or thirty-five people that were. But what is the so? What's the magic number? I don't know. Right, I mean, it's and not the, two. Like we keep hearing these. Like, we haven't heard a magic number for how many cases. Like, the, the state's not going to shut down. We keep talking about this. I just don't think the governor wants to shut it down. They're bringing the debate here, right? The, uh, Miami. Yeah. In October, though, to be fair. Still, we don't. But, the, but the, they are bringing the, um, the convention here, part of it. And so that's supposed to happen in Jacksonville, I think, in August. So it just doesn't... It doesn't benefit the governor to shut everything down. And, no. and he's kind of towing the line that the president is saying in that... Uh, you know, let's just move on. Disney's Herd opening immunity. up in two weeks, supposedly. They are. But Disneyland is pushing theirs back. And they it, decided that we, or they're not going to do it out in California. But I think that's because there's some sort of lobbying pressure to keep Florida open. Uh-huh. And, and not California. California won't put up with it. Uh, although there is a petition with a, over 8,500 signatures on moveon.org, uh-huh. not, a, not a sponsorship, uh, to have them delay d- the Disney World opening. Universal, even though they are open, just laid off what? They didn't say unspecified. They unspecified, but it was across all departments. It was, it was a lot, yeah. They had I mean, a it revenue. was a lot because I'm, sh- I'm sure it was enough to trigger a story about it. Yeah, they had yeah. a revenue dip of 40%. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that's notable. I think the other thing is looking forward. I know uh, Walt Disney World, like I said, they're supposed to open around the 15th, 16th, 17th right. of July. And then they did cancel Mickey's Not So Scary Chris or uh, Not So Scary Halloween. And and so you, you start to think, like, how is that going to affect Halloween Horror Nights? Because Halloween Horror Nights, you and I went last year. It was Halloween packed. Horror Nights is packed. And, like, there's no way around that. I would assume they're going to do what Disney just did. Like, Disney's in a little bit of hot water in that they were, you have to get reservations to get tickets to go in. Uh huh. And they maxed out. So you have already, you can't get in now, apparently, for the, it's like almost like blackout dates. Yeah. And so. But with Disney, like, stuff's already there. And what I'm saying is, right. with Halloween Horror Nights, they're building things that you can go in. And so, like, you know, if Disney has their people going, it's going to be there no matter what. I Halloween Horror Nights, they got to October... hire all these people to make all these different houses. Yeah. There's and a they're whole building investment. them now. Yeah, right. They're not, they don't build them a week ahead of time. I don't know. SeaWorld just furloughed 90% of their employees. I thought they did that before. I thought that I was. Just, I saw just saw a recent thing. Maybe I don't know. Saying... They're open, though. I don't know. They did that a while ago. Okay. Maybe and it was an older roundup that I Might saw. have been. Okay. Interesting. I think they're, they're, I don't know how their capacity is and how many people are there. Well, we shared this. Uh, everybody's been saying like it's older and infirm people who are most at risk for COVID-19. Yeah. And someone just released this interactive map. It's called the Urban Health Vulnerability Index. And we have it up on bungalore.com and it will show you based on U.S. census numbers uh, areas of cities where people are most at risk. And so we have that up on Bangalore too. And you can see it's actually, and it's kind of sad because yeah. it's, it's very, it's like West Orlando, okay, you know, where, which is very high in African-American mm -hmm. populations. Um, and people have been saying they're very at risk for COVID. Yeah. But actually what we're seeing in the, in the numbers where the most numbers we're seeing are uh, in young people. Yeah. They said that number's going down the average age. Yeah, 25 or Whew, something, right? I'm 37, so. I'm sitting, <laughs> I'm helping with this advisory committee that's led by Visit Orlando and uh, uh, Orlando Economic Partnership. So they obviously haven't heard me make fun of them on the radio before. Uh, <laughs> where they're coming up with like a rebranding <laughs> campaign uh, to, to show people who are doing it right. Orlando. Please come here. Please come here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're seeing some big things close. Well, Wahlburgers no. just closed their downtown Orlando location. We haven't even talked about that. But, yeah, Wahlburgers, which was a huge deal when it opened, to have a location in Orlando. I cover the opening. I was there. Donnie Wahlburger was there. Mark Wahlburger was there. I Wahlburger. Else was I keep calling him Wahlburger. Like, that's his last name. Uh, Outpost Neighborhood Kitchen at Cause Park closed. Moving to Maitland. Moving to Maitland. They were doing that anyway. But kind they, of, yeah. They definitely uh, expedited that process. Uh -huh. But we have a lot of new opening spots, too. Do you want to hear about some openings? Real quick, though, okay. Brendan, I do want to say the one thing that is coming here is basketball is supposed to open here in Orlando. Yeah, NBA. And soccer. Uh -huh. And then, but, but now that these cases are rising there's some players that are like i don't know if i want to go to florida they are talking I about it, orlando but it's kind of too late because well, they've no, all no. signed there might, the but there might be some like individual players because I, I did see a story about there was a player from the lakers who has like some family members that have uh, uh immune diseases and they're like i'm not going to go risk my life and then have to go see my kids and so you might see some players that that drop well, off this year you're not going to be able to see your kids they all as part of the agreement is that they have to be quarantined for 14 days after the end yeah. of the season and i just don't think they're going to like some people might not want to do that i think that it's too late i think they've already signed agreements i don't know right they were I, getting like shut said, out they were the whole league was shutting out teams that if they didn't sign it and they all signed it i just think there might be a few players that say i'm just going to sit out this season uh, i don't know what that looks like <laughs> but I I guess if you're getting paid that much, you could do whatever yeah. you want. Um, actually, on that topic, you saw that the Orlando Pride pulled out of their tournament. Yeah, th I, there was a, no a news story about that, though, because apparently what, what happened was with the Pride, they were supposed to go to a tournament in Utah. Right. Some players maybe tested positive Six for COVID. tested positive. But there was a story today that said that it might have been a false positive. What? So now they're doing like retesting, what? but the problem is it's getting too close to the deadline that they can't re-enter 
the tournament. And so, like, it, it might be that none of them actually have it or they Whoa. test the negative. But, yeah, I, I read this before you got here, but it, it's, like, what? too close to the window to the, of oh. the actual tournament that they're not going to be able to go. I do want to say on record, if, you're, if your job is to be a professional athlete, you probably should be going out to the bar before the tournament no and maybe getting sick no that's crazy you should be staying at home yeah right uh-huh. just th- like you know sure you gotta gonna stay be home and there's gonna be penalties for that like yeah from the league oh plus like some of the players that are like come on man like yeah who have been taking it very uh-huh. seriously oh it's sad yeah it's just sad because they all work so hard uh so we're talking about some new places. New places. Some, some some good nice, news. Nice things. Nice things. All we talk about is COVID. <laughs> Doom and gloom. Yeah, I know. And racism. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I just went to the Robinson Coffee Room. Yes. Which is a beautiful new space underneath the Robinson Cocktail Room owned by the Mathers people. Yeah. And it's like, like the old Red Mug Diner place. Beautiful, John. Cool. It is like a temple. I made a video. They do have a cool space over there. It, it's a little hidden. Do. A little hidden. Oh, wait, wait, I'm thinking of. Wait, is it at their hotel or at? No, no, it's oh. downtown on okay. Pine Street. On Pine I was Street. thinking of their, where their hotel is. At. No, no, the hotel, well, the Wellborn, which is a historic building, also beautiful. Everything they do is just gorgeous. It's true. I I love when they okay when I hear that they're buying a new property to do something. I'm always like, good because we need <laughs> more beautiful things. So this is where Red Mug Diner was. Yes, the Golden Knife. Remember that? Yeah, I do. That Ooh, was, just I never awful. went in. Brutal. I went in once. What was there before Red? mug diner do you remember uh it was a it was a diner oh yeah glass knife was before red mug glass, and before no, no, glass it was, knife it was it, a golden knife golden knife and before that it was a it was, it was another like diner. diner it was it was just a normal rinky dink diner That's we used to right. go there all the time it's scotty loved sunrise it. diner or something like that or that sounds right sunny side up something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. i do remember that. it was all old ladies you know yep. you just fill your coffee all the whole time you're there. yeah loved it um go check it out we have a video up on our Instagram, so on our open, Twitter, open? everything. Uh, Monday, Monday, Monday. Well, they're kind of in soft opening. I said I wouldn't blast it out too much because you know you got to be nice. But they're they'll be open. They got open they got Monday. coffee. They got some snacks. Beautiful croissants. Uh, I had the best turkey sandwich I've had in a long time there. Really? Yeah, delicious. Good. So good. Um, out. Well, we said outpost is closed. Mason jar provisions. Yeah, what's this? I saw a video that you posted. Thank you. Did You're you welcome. like it? Uh, I only saw a little bit. I need of some it. punky music. Okay, for you. I thought about you. Um, it's next to Burton's Bar, so there was a space in there called Big Time Provisions. Provisions closed. That was the gnarly barley dudes. Uh, this new spot is run by uh, Chef AJ Haynes. He's a Cordon Bleu grad, and he's been at Luma on Par, Cask and Larder, and Pizza Bruno most recently. Now he's teamed up with these guys, Jeff Darnell, who owns Burton's and the Lodge in the Woods downtown. Oh, okay. So the food is banging. We just went there. We, it was delicious. Everything was fantastic. Is it all coming to Mason Jar? Uh, some of it does. Yeah? Yeah. It's very like Southern inspired menu stuff. So that's okay. why he went with the Mason Jar. That sounds good. Yeah. I, I saw it. that Pizza Bruno's like, they're just doing takeout now, right? A lot of people are just doing takeout. Like they went back to just doing takeout, I think. Yeah, I actually like They were doing dining or, di- or they were doing more stuff. And now they're like, you know what? We're going back to it. <laughs> uh, Pizza Bruno Hunger Street Tacos is also only doing takeout. Um, 60 Vines is still open. Iron Cow has closed. Tori Tori closed. Yeah. Uh, Tornatory's Pizza, the Gast House closed. I know that's my pizza place. Yeah, they've been pretty. So I will say this about Tornatore's is that they actually had somebody outside waiting for you to like pay. So the, they had one person who would go in, get your bill, come out. So like they were taking it serious. The guy had a mask on. You got to take it seriously. Do but you, I, do you but know I the story of Typho- Typhoid Mary? Not, uh, she was a server, right? She was a chef, ah. and she had typhoid, but she was asymptomatic, and she kept infecting like hundreds and hundreds of people, uh-huh. and when they found out it was her, she wouldn't stop cooking, <laughs> and so they actually put her in a government uh, intervention. She was she just had to a forced quarantine for 30 years, Wow! because she just wouldn't stop cooking. 30 years? So take this stuff seriously. And like, you know, I, I will say this, like I, I don't... I'm not a, 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 a immunologist or a scientist or anything like that. <laughs> you even say it like you're Vi- not. Viral, 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 viral,
what I'm saying is like they could do everything right. Like they could totally do all the protocols and wear the masks and yeah. wash their hands and all that. But like some, you know, they're microscopic. <laughs> I mean, people people come in, people touch things. I like that people are taking oh, see, those you one, take those places serious, that are taking still, it seriously, but still get sick. And and that's the that's the scary thing. Do it right. I gotta say. All of the hot single jogger dudes yeah. come by Manello, apparently. I know. I mean, this is where we jog. Yeah, if you're not are... single, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you jog right here? I do. Not here. Too too far from my house. Oh, yeah. It'd it's be like, a long jog. I live right here. I would, you could, but I would you still could be die. jogging. I would there. die if I did anything. Really? Oh, yeah. No, thank you. Let's go jogging. You you and I. I would die. Okay. Well, baby steps. I'll we just walk, slow. I'll walk fast. Start, we start slow. I'm a, more of a speed walker because you can do it like really gay. <laughs> that's, that's my jam. Uh, matcha House. It's a new matcha place. They're going to have soft serve matcha ice cream. What, for the uninformed, like myself. <laughs> what is matcha? It's yeah, like what is green matcha? tea stuff. It's like a green tea. It's generally like a drink. Ah. But now they're doing, it's like a green ice cream. And they're going to have black like mint ice cream chip. cones. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's more herbal and it's supposedly good for you. It's got like oh, medicinal probably benefits. ice cream that's good for me. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hook it up. That sounds good. Charcoal right. stuff too, right? Yeah. Charcoal uh, cones. How do you make that? It's like activated charcoal. You just mix it in with your dough. Ah, uh, yeah. That's different than what I'm barbecuing with. Yes, because it's clean. <laughs> don't eat that. Don't eat barbecue. <laughs> no, there's a, I don't know the process, but it's better for you. <laughs> and it actually helps uh, cleanse your your tummy. Oh, yeah, that's good. Charcoal is actually good for you in moderation. And it can whiten your teeth. Uh, Bad A's Sandwich. They're opening their new Winter Park location. They used to be a pizza place on Fairbanks. It's called mm-hmm. Brooklyn Pizza, I think. Uh, Joe's. 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 That's right. You're yeah. right. Joe's Pizza. Joe's Pizza. Closed. Closed. It's right across the street from Lombardi's new spot. Yeah. And uh, they're open and everybody loves Bad A's. San- that's not their name. It's a bad cuss. A's. Bad A's. Bad A's. are a couple of Bad A's. Uh, what else is happening? Winter Park police are getting body cams. Finally. Like everybody <laughs> in Orange County has them. It was actually approved in 2017. Eh, and then steps. the city was like, ah, we don't want to pay for it. It's great that it's approved, but we're not going to pay for it. You nothing. know what actually costs the money? It's not the cameras. It's the it's data. The data. It's they the had storage. to get a whole new server. Oh, yeah. They had to hire someone to like monitor it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a, a huge thing. A $92,000 spend. Yeah, elite. And then you got to pay every year on it. Yeah, 70 something thousand, I think they but said. But it's good. Year. I mean, most, I mean, I like I said, I, I work at the Orange County Sheriff's Office yeah. and we've had them for years. And, you know, it, 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 it works because it records the whole incident. And so you have the whole time of what happened. So if somebody says, well, you did something to me, you know, hopefully it can show it on the camera. How are we doing on We're time? Good. We're good. We're good. Did you hear this stuff about uh, Commissioner Emily Benia? Not really. I mean, I, I, I saw bad. that you were actually watching the county commission meeting. For the first time ever, John. I really? watched the commission meeting, and people are kind of mean. Yeah? Yeah. There's like this underwriting, like passive aggressive just tone. I mean, they were mean to each other, like the commissioners? Commissioners, staff was kind of like just over it when people, like, a commissioner would ask a question, and staff would be like, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And in my head, I'd always hear like "Bless you." <laughs> was it all on like a Zoom thing? Or were they? Yeah, yeah all that? Zoom in. The the staff had to be in one room together, but they were all like spaced out around this big long table. Everybody else was from their home offices. Yeah. Some of them don't have like lighting or anything. Oh yeah. So yeah. it's just they're in a closet, or so, that's what it looks like. And then their angles are all weird. And I just and it drove drove me crazy because you're like, this is county. There should be some production value or something. And they and they. Have I mean, they have a whole team of, of video folks, and they're great, but I'm sure they can't yeah. go to everybody's house and set up a camera. send them a selfie light or something? Uh, Come well, on. That's just, that is a conversation that I think everybody should have. If you're going to do anything Zoom-related... You need a light. You need a light, yes. Yeah. And, and you shouldn't be looking down into your camera. No, and don't and, lean back in your chair. That's yeah. Another, like we sh- they should have little handouts. The county should be giving them handouts on what not to do uh-huh. and look good so we take you more seriously true, true right so anyway uh <laughs> commissioner Bonilla tabled uh a freeze on rent increases okay right for 12 months yeah and she sent everybody apparently information on the 8th and wanted them to look at it and, and hoping to get it as a last minute addition to the fall ballot uh, or I mean, even sooner some sort of maybe the 18th ballot. august yeah, 18th yeah there's a primary that, that day. sounds right and so 
because it needed to get voted on. So she sent out the language and everything. And so she gets her, her podium soapbox moment to talk about it. And impassioned plea for this freeze on, on, on rental increases. And the mayor was like not into it. Like you could tell he was like, I'm just going to give you your time and then I'm going to shut you down. And that's exactly what he did. And then he opened it to vote. And she was like, this is like whole like reclaiming my time kind of a thing. Uh-huh. Like, you're going to let me talk because what you did not sell what I'm trying to do, you're making me look bad. And then the other commissioners were like, oh, I haven't had like any time to look at this. <laughs> I think we need more time to look at this. And Emily's like, I sent it to you a month ago. Like, well, how much more time do you need? You need to read the stuff that gets sent to you and take your job seriously. Yeah. And I'm not saying this is like a pro or, or con to anything. I'm just saying I just find it very interesting that likability is such a major factor in getting things done in local government. Yeah. Because well, I in can, anything, honestly. Really? Not just yeah. government. But I but this anything you could do. have been something that really helped people. And yes, it needed uh-huh. to be worked so it was, you know, more legal because there's a lot of legality concerns yeah. about shutting down stuff like that. But I think if they had collaborated on it, they could have come up with something that benefited everybody. Possibly. You know? Like saying like uh, suspending taxes on people who like on these uh, land mortgages. Owners. Mortgage. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but like if you're going to suspend rent, then you need to suspend property tax things for, for property I agree. owners. No, too, I, right? I mean, you can't I mean for me, you. like I own my house. I live in the county. Right. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to. You know, why should renters not get to pay or, or increase, yeah, I guess. There's a chain, but it's right? An it's, all it's not just not paying rent. And all I could see instead of anyone like entertaining the idea was just like, oh, it sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> and Mayor Demings was just like, yeah, we need this is just too fast. He even said like it's moving too fast, like really slow. It's moving too fast. Fast. <laughs> and it was just this total like bureaucracy mean girls so, moment. So now you're gonna watch more commission oh, meetings. Addicted. Uh-huh. And I think I'll be live tweeting it because it good. was really funny. That's good. Yeah, people. I need do to know think what's the up. problem with uh council meetings for the majority of council and commission meetings in Central Florida is they're really not that crazy. And what I mean by that is like Going back to where I grew up, yeah, nobody's throwing it. No, but like in Detroit and Philadelphia, like they get yeah, they yeah. get passionate at their meetings. I mean, their their board members are yelling at each no. other. And this was like nerd rage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. want more action. Uh, <laughs> I'm very happy with nerd rage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. Are we out of time? We're almost out of time. I want to say the one thing: there, we're not going to get scooters in Winter Park. We kind of knew that. We talked about yeah. this before because they the co- commissioners and this talk about nerd rage. They're uh, like, "Wow, it's just too messy," and they voted no this down for it. So it's official now that the, they've adopted. The I language. was more upset that they won't do like the uh, pedal bars there, like a bar, like the one in Sanford. Oh, like never. The, why never. not? No, no. Come on, because it blocks. They they can't. Winter parkers can't. Uh, parallel park at the best of times. This time. is true. Imagine if there's people on scooters or a pedal bar going by. Yeah. It would be chaos. <laughs> it would be chaos. It'd be like Karen's throwing shoes for forever. <laughs> we do got to go, Brendan. All right. Come on back. There's, we actually have a bunch of events that you can go check out over the weekend. Just go to bungalore.com slash events. Thanks for bearing with us on this episode. And thanks to the Manello for uh, letting us hang out on their porch, although yeah. they don't even know we're here. Hanging on their stoop. <laughs> All right. See you guys next week. Next week.